Wade should be jumping on in a minute. Uh, I just called him and he just had some technical difficulties, so he should be on here pretty quick, I hope. We've had a couple of directors, new directors come from out of, out of state. In fact, the director of administration, Misty Ann Giles. Talk to him, he's, he's signing on now. Okay, yep, I forgot Tim wasn't on there too, so. There you go. And there's Tom. So I'm, I decided to start investing in stocks like beef, chicken, and vegetable. I hope to someday become a bullionaire. <laughs> Mac. Oh, Mac. <laughs> Maybe no more Mac. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why we're going to let <laughs> Tim, <laughs> Tim direct the meeting. So all I have to do is just stand here and look good. <laughs> You look great, Mac. So Tim, we had some video of you there for a second. Tim Sheehy, um, can you hear us? And let's yep, I got you. Sorry, I was an hour off. Uh, I'm in Pacific time right now, so that was my bad. Sorry about that. But uh, I'm driving, so I'll just be on audio right now. I was supposed to be where I was in an hour. I misconverted, sorry. That's okay. We're, we're glad the technology works and just glad you're you're safe and sound and where it's warm. So direct, director, do you want to say a few words or you want us to just start right in uh, with our stuff? I'll, again, you. I'll congratulate everyone. Thank you for volunteering both your time, your energy, your passion. Thank you for being part of this, this board. It's a wonderful board. What we do is, again, covers the whole state and affects all of us around the aviation industry. So I am very grateful, thankful, and want to give you guys and gals and everyone all the, the support we can from here at the department because you're volunteering your time. And I know you're not doing this for the huge pay. <laughs> and, and it's important what we do. It's important to help, help our, us as a department and us as individuals, because you are the eyes and ears of, of what you represent and what you bring to this board. So again, thank you. And then I'll turn it over to you, Tim. I appreciate it. And any questions, please reach out to any of us here at MDT. Uh, we are always open and available and just wanted to say thank you, Tim. All right, thanks, Director. Um, maybe we'll uh, just go around um, in the order of my screen uh, and do introductions, uh, who you are, just a couple words about your, uh, your background, and, uh, and, and that'd be a good way for us to start out. So uh, first I have is uh, Bill. Oh. Well, good morning. Uh, welcome the opportunity to get acquainted with everybody and looking forward to working together. Uh, my background, I was, I don't, don't want any comments about Californians, but I was born and raised in Southern California. But the Air Force sent me to Great Falls in all their wisdom. I knew I wanted to fly. I went out to the airport when I got to that, my permanent assignment at Malmstrom. There was a sign on the side of the road that said, private pilot license, $649, includes check ride. And kind of the rest is history. I've been a pilot for 50, 54 years, coming up on 55 now. I've had a, most of my career has been in aviation with a large 135 operation. Uh, you may be aware of it called Ameriflight. Um, I helped take that company from 21 airplanes to 105 airplanes and 150 pilots in 11 years. So I uh, have enjoyed aviation. It's been very good to me. And this is an opportunity to give back in a small way to Montana Aviation. Thanks, Bill. And I think everybody knows Bill is the chair of the board. Um, Rob, you're next up on my screen. 
All right, good morning, uh, Rob Bergeson. Uh, I'm the uh, general manager of Edwards Jet Center. Um, I have, uh, it's hard to believe, but April 1st will be 20 years here. Um, uh, when I started, I had uh, uh, no background in aviation. Um, I was a, a banker prior to coming on board. And, and uh, um, so it was um, trial by fire, if you will. And, and uh, after five years, I transitioned into the general manager position where I've been ever since. Um, I still, uh, I, I never uh, uh, ended up becoming a, a pilot, but uh, we, we employ uh, 28 of them here today and uh, uh, admire what, what all the pilots do around the, the state. And um, just really, uh, I, I've, I've grown to just love the aviation business. You know, no, no two days are the same. Um, uh, some days you come in and it's 15 below and nothing's working and, and uh, uh, the next day everything's fine. So um, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to serve with you all and, and appreciate that opportunity. So thank you. Thanks, Rob. Um, Dan, good morning. Good morning, Tim. I'm Dan Hargrove. I've uh, been the director of aviation at Rocky Mountain College in Billings for 18 years. Um, my family is uh, from the Bozeman area. I spent 21 years as an Air Force pilot, uh, flew trainers, T-38s, cargo, and then I flew at Andrews Air Force Base, uh, hauling around government officials in a 757. Came to uh, Rocky, love aviation education. Uh, so I oversee uh, about 130 students in our program were tied as the largest academic program on campus. So over a period of four years, our students get a well-rounded liberal arts education. They learn to fly. Uh, they leave here uh, often as CFIs and they go to everything. A lot of them go to the airlines, but a lot of them don't. They go to Alpine or to uh, Neptune Aviation or fly air ambulance. Uh, some go into the military, et cetera. Uh, so I've been on the board for six years, so I'm in the middle of my second term, and it's great to be here. I've really enjoyed uh, the relationships here and feel like it makes a difference for our state. Very good. Thanks, Dan. And I, I guess um, as we go forward, uh, if you can mention what you represent. I know Dan is education, Bill is airlines, and Rob is uh, FBOs. Um, so just so everybody knows who's representing what um, part of the statute. Tim, uh, Tim, Tim, one other very quick comment. I have class at 1030, so I'm going to peel out of here uh, about 20 minutes from now. You bet. No problem at all, Dan. Um, Tim Robertson, I see you up next. Good morning. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> well, let me go back and just tell you that I grew up in Wisconsin, which is the home of uh, Oshkosh and EAA and AirVenture, and I actually went to the University of Wisconsin in Oshkosh and uh, spent a lot of time getting to know aviation through that. Uh, became a pilot about 30 years ago. Uh, and shortly after becoming a pilot, came out here to Montana on business and ended up coming to aviation conferences for many years before I lived in Montana, about a decade before I moved here. Moved here about 20 years ago. Um, I'm the president and, and majority owner of Century Companies, which is an infrastructure construction company. One of the many things that we do is work on airports and build airports, which is fun for me because I like being around air, airports. Um, I'm on the local, on the, the uh, Lewistown Airport Board, um, which is an independent board between the city and the county, and I've spent a number of years on that and really enjoy being a part of that, helping to develop aviation in central Montana. Um, I represent on this board the Association of Counties, and I um, appreciate being on the board and helping to contribute back, uh, get back to the aviation community in Montana. I've been a part of it for, like I said, close to 30 years where I dip my toe in the water here and really enjoy it. And I'm a, I am a licensed pilot, have a couple airplanes, do some stuff like that. I'm sitting in a hangar here. I'm blessed to have an office in a hangar. So. And I gotta add, Tim, if you ever get a chance to get over, anybody gets a chance to get over to Lewistown and see the hangar, it's a beautiful hangar. Um, it's all, what, a, a third of it is, is uh, retro back to like the 1950s with the soda machine and the whole thing. It's, it's pretty amazing. 
Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's ever appropriate, but um, you're welcome to use this facility if if the board ever has to have a meeting somewhere else. They're welcome to come over and use the facility. We we provide this as a opportunity for people to use free of charge um, for the community and nonprofits and entities like this. So you're welcome to come over anytime. That'd be a great thing um, to do sometime. Um, thanks, Tim. Uh, Greg. So my name is Greg Smith and uh, I grew up here in Lewistown, Montana. Uh, kind of caught the aviation bug from my folks back in the early 70s when I was a little kid. Um, then I kind of, I went to MSU and left the state and, and worked in as an electrical contractor elsewhere and came back in, in 93, I guess, and was an electrical contractor most of my life for Central Electric, which we did a lot of airport electrical construction as far and as well as uh you know department of transportation projects and commercial electrical um 2003 i got a chance to an opportunity to get my pilot's license so i did um, and flew for for my electrical business and then uh um kind of got uh, i call it my midlife crisis i was in the electrical business for so long and I didn't have didn't think I had 20 years left in me to deal with it so I sold that one day in 2000 let's see 2014 I sold that and the next day I bought a aviation business so I got a FBO here in Lewistown Montana and uh, and we do a, a, a um, all your standard FBO stuff and also I have a I'm a spray pilot and I'm currently the president of the Montana Aerial Applicators Association. And that's the position I have on this board. And then we also do uh, a charter, you know, 135 operation, but majority of that is for the part are the uh, Montana fishing game. And then the, also for uh, federal, we do a lot of surveying for uh, animals and what have you. And, and so that's kind of what brought me to this point. And I'm proud to be on the board. Look forward to it. Great, Greg. Thank you. Um, Tom, you're up next. And I, I'm going to help out the board with pronouncing your name once. And then you can do it again. Sean Laban. Took me a while to figure out how to pronounce that one. But um, <laughs> I'm sure you get that a, a little bit. No. Well, I'm impressed that you can pronounce it. it took me 20 years until I could pronounce my own name. Um, but I'm Tom Schoenleben, as similar to Tim, I'm from Wisconsin. Um, I moved out to Montana in 2009, and I'm currently the owner and senior partner with Bitterroot Law here in Hamilton, Montana, with a focus on aviation-related clients. Um, this is my second year on the board. I've been a pilot, well, been a pilot since I was 16, once I got my first solo, but I've been involved in general aviation since I was three, when I had my first ride in the backseat of a Mooney. Currently, I fly a Taylor Craft, um, a Mooney, the 182 that we fly as well. And I've just been involved, love Montana aviation, and just wanna do my part to make sure that we preserve what we have here in Montana and trying to give back to the community and make sure that we have the infrastructure for local airports. So. so thanks, Tom. And Tom fills two roles. He's the member representing the general public, but he's also, um, as required by statute, um, the attorney. Uh, we need to have one member as an attorney and Tom uh, fills that role as well. So thanks, Tom. All right, uh, Tim Cheehy. We got, what, three Tims between me and the board. <laughs> Imagine that. What are the chances of the only nine-member board? Yeah, it'll be tough to keep it straight. But um, so we got Tim Sheehy. I represent, I believe, the Chamber of Commerce section uh, for the board as required by statute there. 
So uh, I grew up in Minnesota, another Midwestern guy, uh, went in the military right after high school, uh, the Naval Academy, and then was active duty for many years. And then um, I got wounded and got out and started our business down in Bozeman at Bozeman Airport. Um, and our business is uh, uh, primarily focused on aero firefighting. We have about a 25 aircraft fleet. And then uh, our other half of the business is focused on defense technology, about 300 employees total. And um, I think as, as a representative of the Chamber of Commerce piece, you know, a big focus of mine is going to be to, uh, to focus on um, uh, growing business uh, around aviation and aerospace in the state. I think there's a lot more Montana can do in that regard. We have a lot of open airspace, a lot of wide open spaces, and some great universities that could feed the tremendous growth uh, in that here. So hopefully we can work on that together. And we uh, under Bridger operate 135, 137, 145, as well as um, a 107 type one UAS operation for large kind of predator class UAVs um, for fire suppression. So uh, kind of cover all aspects uh, of it and uh, excited to really dig in with the board and, and uh, help grow aviation in Montana. Very good, thanks Tim. Uh, Wade, I've got you a uh, voice on the iPad. I don't have any video but you don't need it if you don't want it. Oh, uh, I'm fine if you can hear me. We can. Okay, good. Hey, well, sorry for being late. I had in my mind that this meeting was on Thursday, even though it was the 10th. So anyway, my apologies for being late, but I think I caught most of the gist of it. So anyway, it's nice to see some uh, familiar faces there with Mr. Boselman and Valerie and Mark and uh, Matt so, and Dan. So it's nice to see you guys. Uh, I represent the Montana Pilot Association, which I think most of you are aware, probably one of the larger pilot associations in the state of Montana. It's currently 500 plus members. Uh, you know, for I'm going to keep this pretty brief on my background. You know, I've been in aviation for 30 years, uh, owned my own aircraft uh, for 30 plus years. Uh, I currently uh, fly a, a Bonanza that I own and then I caretake a Husky. So I kind of have the best of both worlds going right at the moment. So anyway, with that being said, uh, I was born and raised in Montana. I was a native. Uh, I got involved in aviation after owning my own business uh, for 20 some years and then I worked at a local lumber mill and management and sales with about 150 employees and then I actually ended up getting my dream job and working for the Montana Aeronautics for nine plus years and ended up retiring as a bureau chief of airports airways so I do have a pretty extensive understanding of how the loans and grants program works. So, uh, and I thought this was just a good way for me to give back to the public for the industry that I uh, truly want to support. Uh, you know, I still got a few years left in me, so I want to give back to what I can. So with that being said, uh, I think I'll get off and put pat myself on the back. And if anybody's got any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Wade, you got a lot of years left in you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wade. Um, all right, let's, let's run real quick through the department. Uh, start with Mike, my boss. Um, if you can introduce yourself. Yep. Good morning, everybody. Mike Boslam, and I'm the acting deputy director. I've been at MBT uh, my whole career, um, 30 plus years. I spent the first half in our maintenance division and the second half running our IT department. And for the last few weeks, I've been helping out with Mac as our acting deputy director and and I'll do what I can in, in this interim period to help aeronautics and help Tim. Welcome everyone. Thanks Mike. Uh, Kevin. Good morning Kevin Christensen. Um, I'm one of the three bald guys in the director's office. Um, I'm the chief operating officer. I've been with the department about getting close to 30 years. Um, I came up through construction, Tim, I've, I know a lot of people that work for Sentry up there and, and I did grow up in Bozeman, a Montana native, um, currently residing in Helena. Kevin, you got to tell them your little trivia about your little uh, cameo with uh, Rainier Beer. So a lot of these guys would recognize that. Yeah, I think everyone here is old enough to know when Rainier Beer had the commercials with the, the, the beer bottles running around. Uh, I was one of the beer bottles, so that, that's my claim to fame. <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? Uh, thanks, Kevin. 
Um, uh, Val. Oh, yeah, thanks, Kevin. That's quite a visual. So, hey, good morning. My name is Val Wilson, and I serve as Chief Counsel for MDT. Uh, and I, I have a, a, a very capable um, group of staff attorneys that are working um, at any given time, at least two or three of them on aeronautics issues. Um, and although I'm not your primary contact for the board, um, uh, the, um, the primary contact is a uh, staff attorney. She's an attorney level two. Her name is Valerie Belukas. Uh, she comes to MDT with a really solid background in commercial law. She has an LLM in tax and has worked on a lot of projects for West Yellowstone. Uh, she would be here, uh, but she's recovering from knee surgery. So I, I'm just um, pleased to, to, um, to welcome you. And if you uh, need anything um, uh, from a legal perspective, uh, please give me a call or you can get a hold of Valerie Belukas. So thank you and welcome. Yeah, and we've really ramped up our uh, relationship with with uh, with legal and, and a lot, not that it was not implying that it was bad, but I mean, as far as the amount of time we use legal, it's really kind of spooled up um, over the last few years. And uh, it's very valuable to us um, to make sure we're on the right side of, of all those decisions that need to be made. So really appreciate the help, Valerie. Um, Lori. Good morning. This is Lori Ryan. I am with the director's office and just assisting Tim um, with the Zoom meeting today. Lori, you do a lot more than that. We both know that. <laughs> Much appreciated, though. Um, and then we'll just zip through aeronautics here real quick. The ones that are on the um, line with us. Um, Mark. Everyone, Mark McKee. Come from Ohio originally. I'm now the Airport Airways Bureau Chief, trying to fill Wade's big shoes, struggling to do that, but uh, I come from the airlines most recently. I was flying for United Airlines. Before that, I owned a business for 10 years. I was involved in flight schools and airport management. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being on the board. We really appreciate it. Very good. Thanks, Mark. And uh, Matt, last but not least. Well, I guess I'll be last. And least. You go ahead, though. Matt. I'm Matt Lindberg, and I'm the Safety and Education Bureau Chief. I've been with Aeronautics for almost two and a half years. Wade hired me, so thank you, Wade. And I worked for him in the Airports Airways Bureau and eventually transitioned over to the Safety and Education Bureau Chief role. And uh, I just want to say that this group right here is tremendous. Your guys' introductions is just the tip of what you do, but the horsepower here on my screen is amazing and I can't wait to see it at work in Montana. And all of you guys have such unique backgrounds and, and different focuses and experiences that I think are, are truly valuable. And just hearing each of what you guys are into is really exciting for me. I hope I can tap into that going forward because everybody sounds so unique. And Bill, I hope you have an FAA Master Pilot Award. If not, expect a nomination. And Tim, thank you for offering that facility in Lewistown. Hopefully we can have a clinic or a training there at some point. That's pretty awesome. I'm a Montana farm boy native. I've been a pilot for 18 years and I'm from Fairfield. Learned to fly in Fairfield and also in Great Falls like Bill. So uh, thank you guys all for participating and giving back to Montana like each of you said. It's really excited to see, especially with increased funding, what you guys do. Really exciting. And um, thanks, Matt. Um, just real quick about myself. Uh, I've been with the department almost 30 years, um, On was uh, almost 20 years or a little over 20 years on the civil engineering side doing highway design, various types. Um, Kevin and I actually studied for our PE together. Um, and then in 2012, I came over to Aeronautics as the Airports Airways Bureau Chief. Um, and then when Debbie Alke retired, um, I was uh, fortunate enough to, to get her job here um, as the administrator. So I am uh, excited to have a new board with new um, folks and new ideas and all those things that come along um, uh, with the change of the guard. Um, and I think there's a lot of great things that we can do. You guys are in a really fortunate position uh, in that the 2019 legislature, uh, through the work of a lot of folks in the aviation industry, were successful at um, increasing our funding uh, particularly for the grants and loans, very significantly um, to the tune of almost tenfold 
uh, we were we were doing about two hundred seventy thousand dollars a year in grants, and um, we've been bouncing around a little bit, but we expect to settle out somewhere around two million dollars a year. So, um, tremendous increase in funding uh, for the grant program. So, super excited about that. Super excited about all your backgrounds and how that's all going to mesh together and and move us forward. So, um, without any more on that. Uh, we, we, the folks here at Aeronautics, we would like to do a short PowerPoint presentation for you, kind of an introduction to aeronautics, um, what we do so you have a good background. We are going to talk pretty quickly um, because we want to leave time for questions and we do need to be done um, at 11 o'clock. So um, if you can hold your questions, we'll zip through this. And uh, like I said, I apologize, it will be pretty quick. We're going to talk fast. So um, I'm going to start us off and we'll kind of tag team this a little bit. Uh, but Montana has uh, uh, about 128 public use airports, about 65 of those are in the federal system. Uh, you might be asking as you, as you read through, next slide Mark, as you read through this, um, you might look at uh, why we have uh, 3,300 pilots and 5,000 registered aircraft. Um, that's mostly because we pull, up, pull in a fair number of out-of-state registrations and pilots that own multiple aircraft. So um, those numbers may not seem to hook up one to one, but that's that's kind of why. Um, there's uh, 13 airports with scheduled airline service. Uh, nine of the airports are primary airports, which means they uh, at what time one time or another, without going into the details, at 10,000 employments per year or more. Um, we have a big state. It's closer to fly from Alzada, Montana to Texas than it is to fly from Alzada, Montana to Yak, Montana. So if you think about that, that kind of puts it in perspective. It's a big state. We got a lot of miles to cover. Um, in 2020, Montana Aviation is estimated to provide an overall net contribution to the state's economy of nearly $2.8 billion and approximately 24,000 jobs. Um, so next slide, please. So this is the organizational structure. Uh, with aeronautics, you can see me there and the board um, off to the side, advisory um, and uh, advisory and then grants and loans, of course, both those um, are provided for in statute. And then you can see the Safety and Education Bureau where Matt is, um, the Airports and Airways Bureau where Mark is, and then um, we do have uh, other positions here at aeronautics including uh, down at the Yellowstone Airport, Jeff, manage, or Jeff Cadillac is the manager down there um, and manages a couple seasonal folks to provide services down there. Um, Mark will go into more detail on the airport so um, and these other positions. Next slide. Uh, that brings us to the Montana Aeronautics Board. It exists through the state statute acting in an advisory capacity to the department and has statutory authority over allocation of airport development loans and grants. So that's the meat and potatoes of how the board is um, provided for in statute. Next slide is the aeronautic board members. Um, so as you all know, um, there's nine members on the board uh, uh, representing different facets of the aviation industry. Um, and the board is a quasi-judicial board, uh, each appointed by the governor for the four-year term. And uh, let's see, I think I covered all the rest of that. So in the interest of time, we'll go through to the next slide, which is actually Mark. Hi, Airport Airways is currently my bureau. We have a few employees here, three up at Helena and three down at Yellowstone. We do have one intern position most summers as well, in addition to the three down at, at Yellowstone Airport. Uh, Tim kind of mentioned Jeff Cadillac. He's our airport manager down there. Uh, we'll get into West a little bit down the road. Uh, we also have 16 state-owned airports. Um, the nice slide for you and a few slides that show where they're at around the, uh, around the state. But with that becomes some responsibilities. So my bureau takes care of airport man management, maintenance, mowing, wind socks, upkeep, general relations, leases with those particular airports. And uh, it does keep us pretty busy. Um, even road and control, which is, uh, we have a lot of turf airports. So we have, we have those issues coming up as well. 
We also try to provide technical assistance to other airports. So not just the ones we own, but any airport that, uh, that calls and asks. In fact, this year we're gonna to try to get a management program up and running that we can help sponsor, or will help new airport managers and existing airport managers with, with more resources, more education on how to better manage the airports. Um, every, uh, we, we're all part of a state aviation uh, system plan. Um, we have an economic influx study, the last one in 2016. Next time we all meet in person, I'll send out, I'll make copies for everyone so you can kind of see the impact uh, aviation has. Tim alluded to that a little bit earlier, but gives a nice breakdown of what goes on. And with that, every year we do uh, capital improvement plans for um, all the airports that are in the NIPIA system. So any airport that's getting federal funding, uh, we, we kind of compile all that data for the FAA and uh, send it over to them so they can help figure out what the projects are for the next five years going at all the airports across the state that receive federal funding. Uh, additionally, we do a PCI, which is a pavement condition index. That's going on this year. It's a once every three year program. We go around to those same airports uh, that are publicly, uh, public use, publicly owned airports to check out the pavement conditions. Uh, we hire a third party consultant to do that, an engineer. We're going through that process currently, and that's another federal grant, but it's all part of our state uh, system plan. Um, 5010 inspections is another um, project we do with the FAA. We fly or drive, depending on the airport, to all the different airports uh, across the state. We do 39 per year. We split it up over three years. There's 118 we're contracted to do. And with that, we do inspections on obstacles, trees that might be growing, conditions of the airports, taking pictures and updating it. Again, this is all to help the FAA determine where funds should go, what projects should be done. And uh, it's actually a pretty fun part of our job because we get to fly all around the state and, and see all the airports. Um, we do a resale program as well to help support the airports. So we buy in bulk lights, casings, wind socks, all sorts of different uh, parts that might be useful to an airport, get them at a discounted rate, and then able to ship them out when airports need them. That's all done through our airport mechanic here at uh, Helena. We also have a courtesy car program. Uh, well, for now anyway, Tim will probably allude on that a little bit later. Which uh, is a really cool program. This, uh, this last couple of years, we've also got a few actual cars instead of just funding grants to give away. It's done in a similar uh, situation as our loan and grants where there's an application every year and then out of the applications, we, we can divvy up, uh, divvy up the funds or the actual cars depending on the year to try to get courtesy cars out to airports that maybe couldn't have them otherwise, couldn't afford them. Uh, and it's, it's really nice to get that resource out to the airports. Hey, Mark, uh, here in Lewistown, we'd like to raise our hand for that Ferrari to be the first in line. Ah, uh, you know, there's one or two ahead of you, but we'll make sure to get you on the list. All right, so here's the airports so that we, uh, we manage. You can kind of see the cities or the structure. Um, the Lincoln Airport nearby is a federal aid airport and paved runway. The Dell Strip is paved, but not federal aid. Yellowstone's our primary airport, which we'll talk about a little bit more. We actually get um, airline traffic seasonally and quite a bit of traffic over the summer. Most of the rest of the, um, well, Browning is also a paved field, but not federally funded. And the rest of the fields are all turf fields, three of them being on the border, which means we actually share that uh, Share that with Canada, although we've been taking the responsibility of, of maintaining and upkeeping them. But if you go on the runways, you're actually half in Canada, half in, in the US on many of them. But this kind of gives you an overview of where all the airports are. Yellowstone Airport is kind of a fun project for all of us. Uh, there's always something going on. Um, right now, there's a current essential um, Air service bid out to increase the service. Currently we have one flight or one or two flights a day, depending on the day from Salt Lake City in with Delta. And we're hoping that this will continue on to expand to United out of Denver, also serviced by Salt Lake. 
it is seasonal, but uh, our pasture service has steadily increased over the last couple of years. COVID certainly had a uh, effect on us this year, just like everyone else. Although at the end of the year, September and October, we actually broke records for employments. So we definitely know that it's, it's on the up and up and, and rapidly, rapidly growing. It's just much closer access to Yellowstone National Park. It's a beautiful place, a nice small town. And we're working on several different projects down there to expand the terminal complex, uh, the areas around it, to make it really a world-class airport. Uh, currently at Yellowstone, there's rental car service, there's a restaurant at the terminal, there's a full service FBO that has general aviation, jet fueling services. We also have our ambulance. We have a fire service uh, support area down there. Uh, it's really, really kind of neat, all the different um, things that go on. And seasonally, we do have sightseeing from time to time with helicopters coming in. Let's see, uh, the smoke jumper base down there is, is really neat. There's only seven of permanent ones and we, we host one there at, at uh, West Yellowstone. And we're currently going um, a winter narrative report with the FAA to determine if it makes sense to open year round. But that's something we'll be working on over the next, uh, next year or so. And then the loan and grant program, probably most interesting to all of you here. Uh, it's the primary focus that we we work with in the end of the year, usually December, January timeframe, we'll have already processed all the applications. Um, we do grant funding provided by a four and a half cent aviation fuel tax. Uh, depending on how much tax we've actually collected each year by December determines how much we have to spend. So it's, it's fixed. Um, we, don't, we no longer do any uh, projections. It's just whatever the number is as of December 1st, that's the money we have to spend to move forward. Our loan funding is provided by a $1 million revolving fund, which as it's paid back that we can use that fund or those monies to go and loan out again. Uh, generally speaking, we, we are able to give out 350,000 in loans on a given year. Last year was kind of an exception. And then depending on how much money we get from the grant fund is how much we can spend. Last year, we had about 1.4 million to give out. We did have almost 10 million in requests. So the word is definitely getting out there that the funds have been increased compared to previous years. So that'll provide a challenge, but um, some really good work for, for all the experts here today. Our requests come from everything from pavement maintenance to airport lighting to beacons, fuel dispensers, de-ice pads, really anything to do with an airport, we're gonna get funding requests. Uh, there's two real types. We have FAA funded projects and non FAA funded projects. If it's an FAA funded project, most of the time they're just asking for their matching fund, their 10% matching. And those are really nice to work with because we're getting the power of the 90% of the FAA funds and we're supplementing the 10% local. And that really can get a, a big project off the ground with minimal state impact uh, of cash out of these programs. And you, the board, will determine how this gets allocated. We'll try to support as much as we can. Uh, currently, we provide recommendations in the form of a spreadsheet every year. You'll also get a board booklet, sort of like the book that you got sent in the mail this past week, but it'll be much bigger, which includes all the applications that we have from all the different airports. And then our spreadsheet, which is just a recommendation based on priority indexes. So as the FAA breaks out different projects and different priorities. We list those priority indexes and we go and try to give you just a starting point. That's all this is, is a starting point based on what we've seen to try to keep a consistent number between the different projects. You don't have to use any of it. You can use all of it. We can change things. It's all about what information the board can use best to help make their decisions. And that's all this support document is. For the next meeting, uh, in the summertime-ish, I think it's, Tim, do you remember what date it's scheduled for exactly right now? I think it's June. I think it's June 13th. 13th, that sounds right. Um, it was scheduled by the previous board. Currently I think it's June 10th. Tenth. June 10th, tenth. okay, June 10th. Um, that was scheduled by the previous board. We can adjust if needed, but uh, that's what we're planning on for now. This is an extension request meeting. It's meant for that loan and grant applicants that 
have not been able to get their projects up and running or fully completed and they need a little more time. So they have to have the application in by the third week of May. At that point, we will process any of those applications, bring them to the board, and the board can decide whether to allow them more time or not. In this particular one, we have a, we're going to have a few extra spots for legal and civil rights training just to make sure everybody's understanding of the roles, responsibilities, the statutes legal will present at the meeting. So, and civil rights training will be conducted at the meeting. That civil rights training is in every other year training that's required by the state for all the board members. We'll give an update from aeronautics of any new changes or any exciting programs going on. And then we'll talk about the extension requests and schedule the next meeting for the, the loan and grant meeting in the, in the winter time. For that, I'll turn it over to Matt, give you a breakdown of the safety education bill. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so in Helen, I have a couple employees and most of our focus with them is registering all aircraft and pilots as required by statute every year. They're all due by March 1, so through the winter is a busy registration season, which we're currently in. Uh, as Tim mentioned before, about 5,300 registered aircraft right now, which is an increase of about 600 from where we were a year ago, despite the pandemic. Some of those are registered from out of state and choose to register in Montana due to lower fees versus the states that they're in. Uh, and then many of them are also in Montana. So that increase is nice to see, even though we have aircraft that sell and are no longer registered with us. So the net gain is impressive, uh, considering how 2020 has gone. Uh, the pilot registrations are also required and continue to grow. Uh, a focus in the Bureau is aviation education. Um, we do things like a winter survival clinic, which teaches people to survive in inclement winter conditions should they survive an airplane crash in the winter. And it's three days long, lots of fun of getting together and having classroom instruction and ground school and actually getting tossed out into the winter <laughs> and building a snow shelter and sleeping outside in it uh, overnight. Um, pretty well attended last year, it was lots of fun. Uh, we do a flight instructor refresher clinic and an aircraft mecha mechanic refresher clinic. Both are FAA certified to provide continuing education for flight instructors and mechanics to renew their certificates every two years, uh, 16 hours and eight hours respectively of training. Uh, we focus on youth education with aviation art contests where awards are administered to first place winners from grades K through 12 across Montana. They and their parents win round trip flights to Helena, have an award ceremony in the Capitol, uh, an airport tour where we fly them home. That's just designed to promote aviation interest across Montana's kids. Uh, we do a summer career camp where we bring kids to Helena for two or three days and take them on tours of every aviation business we can think of. Uh, including the guard, the FAA, air traffic control, air ambulances, aviation doctors, pilots, mechanics, the whole nine yards. And uh, they get a big exposure uh, as high school students to what careers are open in aviation other than just being a pilot. Uh, I went to that when I was in high school, lots of fun. And here I am today. It's definitely impactful and reaches uh, a lot of different kids in Montana. We do the same thing with teachers in the fall, they can get one graduate credit from University of Montana and also 20 to 24 hours of continuing education credits over a long weekend to renew their teaching certificates. And we basically teach teachers basic theories, principles of flight that they can reproduce and use in their classrooms to excite kids about aviation and teach them how to affordably and quickly reproduce those experiments in the classroom too on an ongoing basis in their everyday curriculums. We administer a private scholarship program. The, the scholarships are funded by many, many alphabet organizations or private individuals in Montana. Our division solicits and advertises them and collects those applications and those sponsors then select the winners. Uh, last year due to COVID, some of those scholarships couldn't be funded due to lack of fundraising events. But this year we still, I think I have around $16,000 of private scholarship awards. Uh, so that's really great that we're able to promote those. We also support the Montana Aviation Conference, which is uh, a group of, of aviation alphabet organizations that put on one of the largest conferences in the Rocky Mountain Northwest region of the country. Five to 600 people attend every year, between 60 and 70 speakers and many exhibitors. It's a multi-day conference that travels around uh, our large cities in Montana. Um, 
as you know, one of the board members, new board members, was attracted to Montana by coming to that. I think that's really cool uh, to mention. So uh, unfortunately this year it was canceled due to COVID. Next year we plan on doing it in Missoula. Hopefully that all goes as planned. It's a lot of fun and hope to see you all there. Uh, the other large focus of uh, my bureau is search and rescue. We conduct aviation search and rescue for lost overdue missing aircraft in all of Montana. Uh, we have four pilots of the aeronautics division and about 150 volunteer pilots and their aircraft across Montana that participate in the program. So if there's any aircraft that are a civilian that are lost overdue missing, uh, we work with local law enforcement, county search and rescue agencies, and the Air Force Rescue Coordination Center. And we coordinate and run incident command and fly searches in order to find those aircraft or emergency locator transmitter beacons or, or whatever may be going off. And with that, I will give it back to Tim. Very good. Thanks, uh, Mark and Matt. Um, in the interest of time, again, I am going to, because I'd like to leave a few minutes for questions, um, I'm going to run through this fairly quick. Uh, the aeronautics funding, um, the graph that showed up there, um, you can see that 69% of our funding comes from, th this is for aeronautics now, comes from aircraft registrations, another 13% from the half a cent uh, that aeronautics gets for uh, the, uh, the five cent uh, tax on aviation fuel. Uh, about 80% of our aircraft registration fees are collected between December and February. Um, one of the things we hope to do is, is change over to a rolling registration that would help us out in quite a few ways, um, level out our funding a little bit, but the biggest thing is the workload that it uh, would distribute across the year for our uh, staff. Um, next slide, legislative proposals. Um, we, the only legislative proposal that we put forth uh, re related to aeronautics is the courtesy car uh, to add the ability for courtesy cars to be acquired by third parties at state-owned airports. That has to do with the, um, the way the statute's written, um, that they only allow award to municipalities and the state being the state can't allow um, the public to drive our vehicles. So we're not allowed to own it. So for an airport that doesn't want to, or, or an entity, say a, an airport, a town, a, a county, if they don't want to accept the responsibilities of the courtesy car, this legislation would allow um, third parties to accept that. So say like an FBO, a fire department, um, anything like that. So uh, that's moving through the legislature right now. Uh, it's out of a uh, uh, house subcommittee um, and moving on to the next process. Uh, next slide, real quick, um, just a little bit about what we did in 2020. Uh, we initiated a windsock program uh, that provides one windsock annually to all public use, publicly owned non-federal airports. Um, at the Browning Airport, which is, of course is a state-owned airport, we installed a concrete vaulted toilet, crack sealed, fog sealed, and painted the runway. Um, Yellowstone Airport, we have also had installed a concrete vaulted toilet at the campground there. If you haven't been to the campground, you've got to visit the campground. It's for pilots. You fly in. It's free of charge. Um, really nice facility right there, uh, about a mile and a half, two miles from town. Um, also did pavement maintenance at the Yellowstone Airport. Over at Lincoln, uh, completed a hangar taxi lane extension and pavement maintenance at that airport. Um, got a number of of uh, projects in the works for the Lincoln Airport as well. That's our only other federal aid airport besides West. Uh, and then uh, we administered all the grants and loans we talked about. And then uh, Matt's working to partner with the Montana Learning Center, Learning Center to develop an aviation STEM program. Um, moving into uh, our focus going forward, uh, Mark and his staff are working to install webcams uh, it's a partnership with the FAA to get that on a national uh, webcam uh, program that shoots live pictures every, Mark will be able to tell you, every so many seconds. Um, so pilots, it assists pilots with weather. It's kind of our starting point. We're hoping to expand that up to mountain passes and loop in some of the MDT airports as well, or uh, webcams for the highways as well. Um, and then expand and improve the statewide search and rescue program. Uh, and develop a Montana Airport Manager 101 class for airport managers that are new. 
Um, that seems to be a spot that's lacking. They come in, they don't know what they need to do, what programs are available, um, where the resources are. So we're going to try to help out with that. Uh, Yellowstone Airport, we talked about the work going on down there. And then again, uh, partnering with the Montana Learners Learning Center, Matt and his crew are going to um, try to help get flight simulators out there for the kids and, uh, and folks that come through and use that facility. So sorry it was so so rushed through there, but I, I do want to leave these last five or six minutes open uh, for any questions that you have for anybody in the department or even between yourselves uh, on the board. Thank you. No questions, huh? Hey. Uh, this is Bill. I just wanted to advise, Tim and I talked yesterday and, and I told him that I'd like to reach out to all the board members so we can individually get acquainted. So in the next week or so, I'd like to uh, give everybody a call, just share some ideas, um, thoughts on, uh, one of the functions of the board is obviously as a uh, advisory board. And I have a few thoughts on that, uh, not, not to get, uh, into the middle of, of the division's business, but just to share some ideas and see if there's some things that we can do in an advisory capacity. So just kind of give everybody a fair warning that I'll be, be calling in the next week or so. Okay. Thanks, Bill. I've got uh, one, one comment and one question. Uh, I, I thought that uh, PowerPoint was great. If, if uh, you could share that with the board, that'd be wonderful. Um, to have just a little summary. And, yeah, I'd be happy to share it. Okay, thanks. And then the, the question I have is, is I saw one of the, the, the goals for 2021 was to improve the collection of the aircraft registration fees. Uh, approximately, what do, you, what do you guys think that that uh, success rate is right now in the state? Matt, do you want to take that? Sure. Uh, so compliance with paying those registration fees is increased over the last year because we wrote and implemented an administrative rule that didn't exist before about the aircraft registration fee process. Once House Bill 661 passed, the aircraft registration fees increased 50% on uh, July 1st of 2019, and then 100% of those fees are reallocated to the aeronautics budget. And, and the aeronautics division rather before, only 10% of those fees went to aeronautics and 90% went to the general fund. So there wasn't much focus on, on collecting those as hard in the past, there wasn't an administrative rule. Now that there is an administrative rule, those dollars go back into aviation, they're reallocated differently. Uh, the compliance is much higher. We follow up with, uh, there's penalties associated with paying late on the aircraft registration fees by statute, they're fairly stiff set forth by the legislature is a five times the amount plus the fee if you paid late. Uh, some enforcement actions taken by those who don't or choose not to pay can include liens on the airplanes, uh, personal property judgments, and other things like that, uh, as well as other fines. So as I mentioned before, they're due by March 1st every year. Uh, as of right now, we have almost 2,000 that remain unpaid out of 5,300. So most of those will pay by March 1st. And then those that don't pay are followed up with, they're assessed those late fee penalties, but they're given opportunities to file a waiver basically with us. And if they meet one of those statutory or administrative rule waiver criteria, they could be granted an exemption on paying the late fee waiver or maybe no fee at all. Very small window of, of room there to work within. But most of the time, uh, we are able to collect one way or the other. And if we're not able to establish contact, uh, MDT collections can pursue collecting those too. So last year we had uh, about 800 aircraft that were overdue in their payments after the March 1st uh, renewal period. And we were able to collect on uh, almost 90% of those within 30 days afterwards. And the remainder of those had to go to MDT collections. The difficulty with collecting them is that sometimes the FAA's addresses that the aircraft are registered to, maybe an LLC or a registered agent or an entity outside of Montana, and we're unable to find or contact them. The mail is returned, it's undeliverable, we don't have an email address and a phone number. So we do everything in our power to investigate and try to uh, follow up with those accounts 
in order to uh, you know, gain compliance with those with them paying the fees. So as we get new technologies of locating airplanes and people, we're getting better and better with that administrative rule and um, collecting. So I'm optimistic this year that we won't have as many as previous years for sure. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Thanks, Matt. Um, in the interest of time, I think I'm gonna have to cut it off there. Um, if anybody uh, has any more questions, feel free to email me, call me, or Mark or Matt, any of us are always available to, to help you out. We're all about the customer service. Um, so thank you all for participating. I appreciate it. Tim, real quick, this is Greg. My the, uh, address and phone number you have for me on the website is not right. So I'll just leave it with that. Yep. Thank you. We'll get that corrected up with what everybody sent me. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. Nice meeting you.